This is absolutely unreal. There's so much happening in the transfer window. Things that we didn't know about until today. This is just mind-boggling. It's brilliant. And uh, welcome to the Bobby Moore stand. My name's Gary, and this is my transfer update. Again, uh, disclaimer, it probably all change by tomorrow, because that's the nature of this window. Before I start, sorry for the fan noise, but I'm hot enough. I ain't going to be hotter. Before, you know, please could you give this video a like so that YouTube points viewers towards us. And uh, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. We're heading rapidly towards 4,000 subs, which is mind-blowing, really. Another mind-blowing thing. That's massive progress in just a couple of weeks. So thank you for all those that have subscribed. And if you'd like to join me on this journey of launching my new channel uh, and you like watching my stuff, please can you subscribe. Hit the bell notification icon. And again, don't forget to give the video a like. So um, on with the show. And it's a big show, this one. So before we go to transfers, bear with me. A few words on Palace Saturday night. I stayed up and watched it. Um, let's be honest, it wasn't great, was it? It wasn't great. Uh, but we, we had actually beaten Palace 3-0 in a 60-minute game just before with our first-team players. Then we put out pretty much the last year's first-team squad, you know, which was a little bit, you got to say, a little bit ropey. Um, there weren't very many good performances in there. Vlad was undone early on. Suchek, again, he can't play that role in midfield, can he? JWP, he can't play that role either. You know, I don't know why we did the same experiment again, but seemingly we did. A couple of good things have come out of it. Out of it was clearly Potts looks like a first team player. When he went off, um, yeah, it was it had a bad impact on the team, didn't it? Uh, what little defensive cover there was completely vanished in the second half the one good period we had was in the second half of the first half I thought because at half time I was actually all right I was actually all right terrible start second half of the first half I was actually quite enjoying it because we were pressing from the front really forcing chasing Crystal Palace back into their own box a lot of the time and I, I, I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed that but second half less said about that the better um I didn't take too much out of it other than Potts was good. And, and Antonio showed that he's up for the challenge, which, to be honest, a lot of these players who are looking like they're outbound, they don't. They seem to have given up the ghost. Um, so, on to the transfer news. Uh, today, we will announce that Nicholas Fulkrug, the German international striker, will sign a three-year plus one-year option deal at 100k a week. Uh, 20 million in wages. That is overall, but that's we don't take we don't count that now. Rodriguez uh, will be announced later today as well. Uh, a two-year deal worth only two million per year, so 40k a week ish. Sounds like a bargain for a World Cup winner, doesn't it? Wan Bissaka, Man United. Uh, they're expected to tie up Missouri in the next couple of days. Wan Bissaka's going nowhere until they sign Missouri, the replacement. All right, he uh, flew into London, uh, sorry, not to London, into Manchester. Um, at least they were booking a flight anyway. Uh, once that happens, and hopefully that will happen in the next day or two, then, you know, stuff will get real between us and Man United. Man United, there's rumours that they're inflating their asking price, but uh, I, can't, I can't see that personally because I think it's well known that Jim Ratcliffe and Enios, since they've got involved in Man United, you know, they've been really taking FFP, or whatever it's called now, very seriously. Um, and so they need, they've been trying to cut their costs as well. Big staff cuts and things like that in Man U. So I don't think they can turn down, you know, what would be a decent chunk of money when uh, they might end up with nothing if they hold on to the player, right? And he wants to come to London and there's no other big teams in London who are looking for a right back. So the options are limited, right? Um, there's been no more news on... But ex-Barcelona attacking midfielder Sergi Roberto, who I got so excited about in the last video. But as we've seen so far, no news doesn't necessarily mean that nothing's happening. Uh, the same could be said for Duran, because that's gone all quiet as well. But we know the situation there. We're offering a uh, you know a loan now, pay later, obligation to buy um, deal, which I think Villa would be a bit silly to refuse, frankly, because. What else are they going to do with him? No one else is what is willing to pay the sort of fee that we're looking to pay. Um, but they want more. Um, 
I, I think it's a case of market rate. I don't blame Sullivan for this at all, to be honest. I think we, I think he's done the right thing. We are also being linked. You know, the, the, the position we need to fill next is clearly centre-back. We're being linked with Jan Bisek, 23, centre-back from Serie A. Che no, so Italian. Champions Inter Milan for a reputed 21 million quid. Um, German under-21 international. Good. Very strong German theme here. Uh, for, he, he previously played, last summer he transferred from a frankly unpronounceable Danish team. He's played 21 times last term in the championship winning side. Uh, Inter, uh, two goals and two assists. You've got to bear in mind, that was all done from like December onwards. He got eight minutes up until December. So that means he really came on towards the end of last season. Six foot two, ranks in the top 1% across all five leagues uh, in Europe, the top five leagues for goals and prog progressive carries. Bloody good for a centre-half, isn't it? And a 92% pass completion rate. A very technical player. Um, he's been described as a diamond by Italian journalist Antonio Mango. That's a real person. Really is. Okay. Uh, this is after the news that Jean-Claire Todibo of Nice still hanging out for a move with uh, to Juventus. I don't think they've got the money to buy him. He'd probably end up staying at Nice. Uh, we know that Nice tried to influence the deal and move it forward a bit with our increased offer, but it don't look like that one's moving. But again, just because it seems like it's not moving doesn't mean it isn't. A lot of these other deals could be to hurry that one up, right? Um, another defender we're being linked with is 23-year-old Logan Costa, around 12.8 million, um, and a 24-year-old Umar Sule, six foot three inch tall from Red, Red Bull Salzburg, uh, for a uh, you know similar price. These are neither of those two have extensive top league ex league experience like Tadebo, which uh, brings me on to the main course, which is um, you know we're being linked with Gomez of Liverpool for. I mean, a deal's just fallen through for Joe Gomez um, for £45 million to Newcastle. Now, we know he's a quality player, right? We know he's a quality centre-half, and we know what we had to pay for Max Kilman. So it wouldn't surprise me, if we are in for him and we're serious, that we end up paying, you know, 35 to £40 million. I think 45 is a little bit too rich for us, to be honest. Um, and maybe that's where the Newcastle deal fell down. I don't know. But, you know, I don't know what the, what the player is... What the player is demanding whether he wants to stay up north or whether he wants to come down to the bright lights of London. There's no brighter lights than London Stadium. Biggest bloody scoreboard in Europe. Lights the place up like a candle. We've also been linked, this one's exciting actually, with a 23-year-old attacking midfielder, Matt O'Reilly of Celtic, uh, who's played internationally for Denmark. Matt O'Reilly, Denmark. For 25 million, roughly. Um... His, his stats are amazing, but you got to bear in mind, some of it's in Europe as well, right? So, But you've got to bear in mind it's Scottish League plus Europe for Celtic. Last year, he got 19 goals and 18 assists. I mean, he is the crown jewel in, he's the, in, a, in, the, in Celtic's crown. I mean, they, they, they'll be, he had assists against Lazio, Atletico and Madrid and Feyenoord in Europe. So it looks like a really, really promising player. So look, that is a wrap. That's that's a wrap of all of the players we're being linked with, um, as of this moment. There'll probably be more by later, um, but up to eight of our players could be allowed to leave if the you know if the right offer comes in, and that a lot of them are unsurprising. Suchek, Agued, Zuma, Sufal, Ings, Kone, and JWP. Uh, Mavropanos is another one that they would uh, potentially be looking at if the right offer came in. And it might do, right? It might do, because I think he, um, if I'm being brutally honest, I think he's more suited to a European game, uh, a slower tempo than the Premier League. Um, he'd done well for us a few times, and he covered well for us last year. And I don't know what he'd do playing in a, you know, an end-to-end -end good defence, which it would be. You know, if we were to get, like that Bissak, the, the centre-half, to play alongside, um, you know, Kilman and then you've got wan -Bissaka, and then you've got Emerson, then the game time that uh, Mavropanos would get would be coming into play, you know, of injury or, or whatever, to one of those key, one of those first-choice defenders. Suchek has been offered out to Jose Mourinho, Fenerbahce. Um, he gets around, doesn't he? I, 
I, I mean, this is very much a, a Mourinho type of player because he's a stopper. I mean, he wouldn't use him the way we've been using him, trying to use him as a ball-playing midfielder. That wouldn't be his job. But as a stopper and a, a box crasher, he's really, really good at that, right? Um, you know, he, he is a good player, just just not suited to what we want to do. Um, Vlad apparently attracting interest from Galatasaray, so it could be um, a move to Turkey for both of them. Um, I, I think that's a that one's a bit of a risk because I want to have I want to see two good players in every position, and to me, Vlad is the ideal backup. He's not really first team anymore. But you know, if he gets it, he didn't look fit the other night. He looked way out of sorts. But if he gets his head together, gets himself fit, and he's desperate, gagging to come on from the bench, you know he's not going to let you down. And you know he's not going to let you down on the odd time he has to come in to cover for wan if he's got quality playing alongside him, right? And quality in front of him as well. Because you've got to bear in mind, a lot of the defensive problems we had last year, even though a lot of those were individual errors, a lot of that came from the uh, the midfield in front not providing any any protection at all. I mean, the opposition teams were just running straight at them, right? So they were gonna make mistakes, weren't they? So, but we're gonna sort that out as well. So hey, it's good. Uh, Aguerd is being touted around for thirty five million. Um, I, I don't know who's gonna buy him for thirty five million, but look, he, he he suits France. He suits the French league. He was outstanding in the French league. There must be a taker. I don't know why we don't try and do a sort of part exchange for Sadebo, to, to, to be honest. Uh, maybe Nice wouldn't be having any of that stuff. Uh, I think cash is king in this uh, in this FFP economy, isn't it? Um, nobody's buying Zuma, let's face it. We're going to have to give him away or pay him off. I don't know about Ings, you know, who would be interested in Ings. Maybe a championship side. Um, I don't think you're going to see a Premier League side. Maybe one of the promoted teams, perhaps. Corne as well. I think maybe... We'll be looking at moving him back to France or something. Um, who else? Uh, that's it. Ward Prowse. I, I mean, he's on massive wages, so I don't know what we do with Ward Prowse. I wouldn't be averse to keeping Ward Prowse if we're going to use him as a backup attacking midfielder. That'd be right. A backup, a second choice or a third choice or something like that. But that's a bloody expensive second or third choice, isn't it? He's not going to be in the first team. So I, for me, you can't really have people sitting on the bench on a hundred and whatever a grand a week he is uh, at the moment. So, um, so look, I think things are looking very, very good. This is a mad, mad window that I'm thoroughly enjoying. I hope you are too. Um, there was a lot of reaction to the Palace game on Twitter some really odd reactions actually like we're going to be in relegation trouble this year uh, I'm not pressing the panic button yet well look no put your panic button in the drawer there's no need to panic there's no need to get all, all et up about this it's a meaningless friendly where we played our, our best players in a game earlier in the day I mean we haven't played our best team against Wolves or Palace. I mean, this is a load of players who probably know they're leaving, trying to play a new system that they don't, they ain't really buying into, right? But on the upside, you know, Potts is a positive, a real positive that he's he's definitely going to make it. Um, and as we've seen, Antonio is up for the challenge as well. I think with regards to the other kids, I think you're going to see uh, a few loans happen um, because some of them will be ready to be third choice um, in in some of the positions. Others, I think it will suit them really well to do what Potts has done. Go and spend a season, a whole season, playing for a very good uh, championship or, or, or League Two team where they can thrive, hopefully. right? And if you're good enough, you will thrive, like Potts did. Player of the year at Wickham. He's come back, look at him. Absolutely brilliant, right? So you've got you to think as well what our starting lineup might be against you know one or two more signings. Our, our starting lineup against um, Aston Villa in a couple of weeks. It could be something like this. You know, Ariola in goal, obviously. wan Costa maybe. Kilman and Emerson as a back line. I'd like to see Tadebo instead of Costa, but hey. Rodriguez and Paqueta as the two in front. Bowen, Kudos and Somerville in front of them. And Fulkrug being supplied with the bullets by the three nippy, creative beasts behind him. Now that to me, that ain't the team that lost to Crystal Palace and Wolves, is it? That's a very, very different proposition. That is a proposition that a lot of teams are going to find very difficult. Uh, by the way, that was a 4-2-3-1. 4-3-3 would vary. Um, there's only three players in that team who played the other night, right? Emerson, Kudos and Kilman. 
Uh, by the way, Kil Kilman, he made one good tackle, didn't he? I haven't been that impressed with him so far. Bloody hell, it's early and he's been playing in ropey, ropey games with ropey teams around him. And did you see that pitch the other night, the way it cut up? Fucking injury nightmare that was. Glad they didn't put Zuma on. It would have broke his knees. His legs would have literally disappeared from under him. So, look, there's nothing to worry about. At the moment, let's, let's support the manager. Let's support Tim. They're putting a team together here. It's going to take time. You know, and I'm not... You know, don't expect... I mean, it might be a great start, right? But don't expect to uh, to go in and slaughter Villa. It's going to take a while. You remember, I don't think it would quite take quite as long as the Bournemouth guy last year, but you remember that Bournemouth guy? It was like two months until his new system actually bedded in, and then they started beating everybody. Um, you know, so we've got to stick with the manager. We've got to stick with the manager. He's new. He's got a new team. He's got... This, this, is, this is all brand new. So... Um, yeah, be patient. Please, please be patient. Right, that is me done. Um, until next time, when no doubt I'll have even more transfer news. Uh, by the way, please subscribe if you wouldn't mind. Please, go on. You know you want to. Until next time, see you soon. Come on, you irons.